Hi everyone, I'm here with some more Rocket Sled Madness, and I realized that the combined mass of the Orion carrier plane plus the Orion 3 space plane that I was using with the Rocket Sled was about the same mass as a fully loaded starship. And so here I have my stubby starship version without the heat tiles or fins because I wanted it to be able to get to orbit. And here we're overshooting with the Rocket Sled because of a staging issue there. Well, we seem to have some teething problems here, as you might have expected. There will need to be adjustments made. Actually, most of the failures I didn't even record. I already had quite a lot of failures before I got to this point. Uh, this was actually fairly promising, but ultimately, well, it doesn't work out. It all breaks apart like that. It tends to break apart just like that, because we have fuel rings in this stubby starship. It isn't one piece and that's so that I can expand it as necessary and yeah well that happened uh, I ultimately decided to auto strut it I also decided to turn the front end upside down because otherwise the nav ball is upside down and that might cause problems for KOS so here we go again I did put the little ray to assist rockets now, it seems to get away from the rocket sled much more cleanly than the Orion carrier plane in general. It's much more reliable on that, and that leads me to think that the aerodynamic surfaces on the Orion carrier plane, the wings and the tail, might be causing a problem for us. And so I'll have to go back and see if we can make sure that those aren't actuating or something like that. I, I thought I had turned them off, but I'll have to double check. As long as we get cleanly away from the rocket sled, this does have enough delta V, that's why we don't have the tiles or the fins. We do have nine engines, six sea level, and three vacuum. And along the way I turn off three sea levels at a time, so right now we have three off, so six engines right now. And then once we get enough thrust weight ratio, I'll turn off another three. And we aren't carrying a whole lot of cargo, we're carrying, we're meant to carry crew, but what we're carrying right now is the food, water, and oxygen for the crew for an extended period of time. They could live in here for a while. Uh, the script had a problem, of course I have to adjust that, but that's fine. I just relight the engines and continue on my own. Uh, but what this is meant for is to then be refueled in orbit and then bring the crew over to the moon and maybe bring people back and stuff like that. So that is the goal. And it's more of an orbital vehicle. It's not, I, I didn't mean for it to land on the moon. Some other lander would be used. It would rendezvous with that. It does have the opening nose cone and docking port in the nose. So we've got that. Unlike the regular Starship, this would not be reused by bringing it back down to the surface. It would be reused going back and forth between Earth and the Moon. So that is the idea. And it does make orbit. So that's alright. It makes orbit with enough Delta V to maybe rendezvous with something like a depot. So that's good. Still with the little radio units on the side. It does technically have the landing engines, but we wouldn't be using those. So it's basically a cruise ship and the crew would actually hang out in orbit while it gets refueled as far as I'm concerned. So I mean there's enough food, water, and oxygen for that. Now what we have here is a bit of a rotational problem. There was a phantom roll on it and I couldn't get rid of that. So that's a peculiarity right now and I'm wondering what causes that. But we do have to do further tests with the rocket sled it's entirely possible that what we had was a fluke and in fact on this try well it clears the ramp at least though whether rocket sled actually stays on the ramp is a good question but then it overextends like that and then rips apart so I progressively have to tell the script not to go so hard on the pitching up On this try, off it goes. It is pretty consistent in its ability to get away from the ramp, so there is that. But it does break apart like that, unless we're very careful. 
it certainly needs to pull up. It can't just be following prograde or anything like that. So the question is just a matter of how much, how quickly it does it need to pull up. I'll have to reorient the nose part of this since it seems to be upside down. I mean, I put it upside down here for a reason. The, the orientation of it in Unity is upside down. So I'll have to fix that. Well, this looks promising. It's nice to get that boost to basically Mach 1 with the rocket sled. It's very helpful. So that was, that's, that was looking pretty good, but it just fell apart anyway. So needs to be milder than that. So I adjust the script again and make it milder. This version is the 1,600 ton version of Starship, I believe. Which is still fine for the rocket sled. The rocket sled is meant to handle this as long as we take off the ballast tanks that I had added for the Orion carrier plane and the Orion 3 space plane. Since this is a little bit heavier than that, it doesn't need the ballast tanks. Or maybe it should have the ballast tanks I, uh, in order to keep the rocket sled on the ramp. But at this point, I wasn't caring about the rocket sled at all. Just about getting this to orbit. So this time, we seem to be in better shape. It's not pitching up so hard. Probably it doesn't need to fully throttle up, but then if it isn't fully throttled up, then it probably wouldn't be able to maneuver as well, so that's a bit of a worry. So, we continue on, and I did adjust the script to see if it could handle it all the way to orbit, because we had that error on the first attempt that actually got that far. Same deal with shutting off the engines, so I turn off three of the engines and we're running on six here. The vacuum engines have a little tiny bit of gimbal, but I do turn on the RCS when we're on the vacuums here. So there's just the vacuum engines at this point. I think I'm only using the default setting on the Raptor engines and so they might have a better performance version like a Raptor 3 version available so we could probably get a little bit more out of it. I don't think we would be able to go to just six engines in that case but that would be that would be great if we could but I'm not sure about that. So here our orbit is getting a little bit lopsided so I decided to take control and coast to apoapsis but we see this persistent roll here. You can, it's using uh, half of the roll authority there constantly. And it just can't stop doing that. So we've got some phantom force on it. I turned off the gim gimbling on the engines and that wasn't it. So maybe it's the radio engines? I don't know what's causing it. The main body of this is pretty simple. Maybe it's the elevator? I don't know. But something's causing some phantom force there. But anyway, there it is, Starship, making it to orbit thanks to the rocket sled and also being relatively light. Though, actually in orbit right now it's 150 tons, of which I think about 25 tons was fuel. So it's not super light or anything. The radar rockets are also a bit of it. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.